Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is acknowledging for the first time that Western partners are increasing pressure on Ukraine to negotiate with Russia. He hinted that talks would hurt Kyiv as he unveiled what he called a victory plan to the Ukrainian parliament. Now, the plan maintains Ukraine's military incursion into Russia's Kursk region. Zelensky said that Ukraine is not prepared for a frozen conflict. His plan also includes Ukraine receiving an invitation to join the NATO military alliance. Well, Zelensky also said that ceding Ukrainian territory is not an option on the path to peace. If we don't step up now, Putin will have time to step up next year and put an end to diplomacy forever. Russia must lose the war against Ukraine. And this doesn't mean a freeze in fighting, and it doesn't mean any trade in Ukraine's territory or sovereignty. Well, our correspondent Nick Connolly, he followed that address by the Ukrainian president. He joins me now from Kyiv. Nick, did we learn anything new here? Look, Brent, I think the most interesting stuff is still secret. We have been reading the Ukrainian press that there are still significant parts of this victory plan that have only been shown to Ukraine's allies and that are not going to be published anytime soon. But for the most part, these were things we were expecting, yes, more uh, you know, reinforced demands for Ukraine to be invited to NATO. Zelensky did say that NATO membership wasn't going to happen today or tomorrow, that this would be a long process, but that the invitation was crucial. Obviously, asks, you know, asking for more weapons and permission to use those Western weapons against Russia and targets far behind the front lines and the borders of Russia. But then there were some kind of unexpected uh, kind of side announcements, which took many people by surprise here. On the one hand, Zelensky talking about the potential after the war for Ukrainian soldiers to maybe help U.S. forces in NATO members in Europe to kind of protect them from uh, the threat of Russian aggression. There was talk of uh, Western military non-nuclear deterrents being uh, based in Ukraine. Whether that was going to be before NATO membership or after, all unclear. But uh, for the most part, the, the kind of main parts were expected, but there were these little kind of side announcements that um, wow. no one really had on their radar. Yeah, re-nuclearization of Ukraine is what that sounds like. I mean, is there enough here to convince Ukraine's Western backers. I mean, we, we'd heard unnamed U.S. officials quoted as saying that they were um, unimpressed by what they had seen in this plan. Look, I think, you know, for some people, this is going to be, uh, you know, for some capitals, it is going to be a lot all in one go, and they're going to be a bit, uh, you know, surprised by some of these announcements like the the talk of ukrainian soldiers protecting europe alongside american forces that is not something people were expecting um i think zelensky's well wishes would say he is someone like macron in france for instance who likes to think big who likes to kind of widen the kind of scope of what people are talking and thinking about there is also speculation that maybe this is just about asking for as much as possible in the hope that you get at least some of it and that if you just ask for what you expect realistically to get then you'll get even less um i think this is also now just a time just before you know, Joe Biden leaves office where there's a real hope here that Joe Biden might look at his legacy and say, actually, maybe this war would have been avoided if you know, the West had moved faster to bring Ukraine in. We certainly had you know, former uh, NATO General, Sec Secretary General Stoltenberg saying that you know, NATO could have done more uh, earlier and potentially you know, prevented Russia coming in. So I think this is just a kind of sense now of trying once again and also just responding to that pressure from outside, right? Because yeah. the West at least wants Ukraine to talk about ways to end this war war, even if Moscow for now doesn't show any sign of being interested in negotiations. Yeah, in hindsight, it is painfully 2020, that is for sure. Nick Connolly in Kyiv tonight. Nick, thank you. And for more now, I want to bring in Marina Marone. She's a military analyst at King's College London. She joins us tonight from Munich. Marina, it's good to see you. On the battlefield, Russia, we know, is gaining territory in Ukraine's east. We know that Ukraine is struggling to hold on to the summertime gains it made in Russia. You can say many things about what Ukraine is doing against Russia right now, but you cannot say that Ukraine is winning this war right now, can you? Good afternoon, Brent. Well, um, it is unfortunate for Ukraine right now, especially since the Kursk incursion 
which has led to even more losses on the Ukrainian side and to the acceleration of the operational tempo on the Russian side in the Donbass. And what we're seeing now is that Russia has taken Toretsk, has taken Bukhledar, and um, is probably going to take Pokrovsk, which is a, a strategic city for the Ukrainian forces. So no, we Ukraine, um, not just with a shortage of ammunition and um, military equipment, but the problem is a shortage of manpower and capable manpower being able to operate Western weapon systems to fight on the battlefield. So no, uh, Ukraine is definitely not winning in military ter terms. It is losing. You know, for the past two years, we've talked, we've spoken many times, and your analysis has always been very, very careful and you've been reserved in your opinions. Let me ask you for your opinion now on this victory plan that was presented by Zelensky. Well, it is an interesting plan. Um, if you put yourself in, into Zelensky's shoes, he has to present something. But the problem is Ukraine doesn't have a strategy. Uh, neither does NATO, for that matter, uh, when it comes to Ukraine. What is the end game? And without having a strategy, you can have a big wish list. But if you cannot um, align your political end state with your capabilities and resources, and part of those capabilities and resources are coming from the West in the Ukrainian case, then you don't have a strategy. And so you have a list of these things like um, long range strikes, so lifting all restrictions. So they, they range from military to political to geopolitical points that Zelensky raises. However, they are a way too ambitious, especially given the fact that um, President Zelensky still believes that Ukraine is capable of returning to the borders of 1991. And mm. I would say, given the current global situation, given the situation in Ukraine, and given even the crisis in global supply chains, it is an unrealistic goal. And therefore, the end state needs to be recalibrated according to what mm. is actually available. You say that the borders of 1991, our correspondent Nick Connolly said that in today's um, speech, there were a couple of surprises from Zelensky. One was um, that possibly stationing NATO or Western nuclear weapons in Ukraine, a future Ukraine that will be a member of NATO. That, that sounded unrealistic, but it also sounded like we were going back to the future. Well, uh, I, I think that uh, NATO, uh, first of all, let's let's um, say that NATO doesn't have nuclear weapons by itself. Mm -hmm. NATO members have nuclear weapons. France has nuclear weapons, the United States, for, for, for instance. And so stationing nuclear weapons in Ukraine uh, would essentially, if these countries agreed to do so, would that deter Putin? So the question is, we think that this is a good deterrent. Will it work on Putin? That's a question. We need to think where are the weak spots in Russia and what is going to deter Russia, aside from the fact that, um, again, as with a, a Cuban missile crisis, that is a recipe for escalation, a possible nuclear escalation. And I don't think that NATO leaders and the U.S. in its current position pre-election has any sort of risk appetite mm. of stationing nuclear weapons in Ukraine, especially given the fact that it's not simply a matter of logistics. You send those weapons there, you have to build bunkers, you have to prepare the infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Along with that, you will have to station forces there. So mm. I, I think it's quite an unrealistic um demand or wish from mm. NATO, especially given the fact that Ukraine is not a NATO member. And I don't think that in this current state, Ukraine is going to become one. Marina, Marone, as always, Marina, we appreciate your time and your valuable analysis. Thank you. Thank you for having me.